or school construction, and teacher supplements. And in teacher supplement area in particular, I see a real divide uh, that has been taking place and I think is getting worse and worse, which will affect the ability, I think, for rural areas to be able to recruit good <coughs> teachers. And we've got the examples we have, I guess, or you have Wake County now that can offer about a $7,000 teacher supplement. We've got eight rural counties in the state that still offer zero because they don't have the money to do it. So you can imagine, and I'll use, let's just pick a county. Let's pick a Hanson County. I think that's a good example. You have Anson County, what I would call a, a fairly poor rural county that's close to Union Mecklenburg County. They could have the best teacher in the world, but uh, Anson County, I think at this point, is offering somewhere in that $1,000, $1,500 range for a teacher supplement. But yet you got a Mech and a, and a Union County that can offer close to a $6,000 teacher supplement. So why would a teacher stay in Anson County and teach when they can go one county over, make a 15 minute drive, 20 minute drive, and make $5,000 more? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? So if I'm a teacher, I'm looking as hard as I can to find a position in that other county. And that's happening all across North Carolina. And it's a, it's a county responsibility, but we all know some of our counties can't do anything about it. We don't have the resources to make a difference. And this divide will continue to grow. And I'm not sure, is it when you have a county offering zero and a county offering $10,000? Or is it when it's zero and $15,000? Where's the breaking point? I'm not real sure. But that breaking point is close in my opinion, if not already here. And I think it's a real issue that we've got to, to figure out real soon if we're going to expect teachers to, uh, to go in some of these rural areas and teach our students and make a difference. And, and, and that's a high priority for me. The other priority for me is school construction. I know I, I represent Jones County. I grew up there and the middle and the high school in Jones County are the schools that I went to that haven't changed. Both of those facilities are in terrible condition. Uh, but one cent in property tax in Jones County creates $75,000. That's what one cent does for property tax. So anybody here that's a math major, you tell me how you put a bond referendum together that can build a school. You can't do it. You'd have to go out and ask your citizens to raise their property tax by 30, 35 cents to build a school. That makes no sense. It can't happen. And that has really, uh, in my opinion, over time, created a situation where the rural counties have got schools that uh, have all kinds of repairs and, and need replacement, but no revenue source to do it. And I've been working on this uh, for a while, and I've created some controversy because I've tried to do it through sales tax and, and some other areas. Uh, I've actually got a bill this session that uh, deals with some lottery dollars that would generate about 75 million ongoing dollars to, to target some of these uh, thicker schools. But this is a real issue that's getting worse by the day, uh, and somebody's got to figure it out. Uh, the lottery piece now, there's about 100 million in the lottery that goes to school construction now. But if you look at how it's allocated, it's allocated out on a per pupil basis. So you got Wake and Mecklenburg County getting over 10 million each of that 100 million, and we've got a couple counties that get $40,000 a year. So. Uh, you know, if you live in Hyde or Terrell County and you're getting $40,000 a year from the lottery for school construction, uh, what kind of construction are you going to do with $40,000? Not a whole lot, are you? You might fix a roof if you're lucky or replace the heating and air unit if you're lucky. But that's the disparity that we're dealing with as far as some of these dollars that are going out for these particular areas. So we have to continue to work on them. Uh, I think we've got to make sure that some of the wealthier counties understand that they've got to be part of this solution. And that's the real challenge because up here in Raleigh sometimes, it's all about my district. It's, you know, it becomes a turf battle and it becomes numbers. And you can see how many counties Angela represents. Uh, you know, we've got uh, Senator Smith or Ingram, I think she's got about seven counties. Uh, we've got Senator Davis, he's got seven counties up in the mountains. Uh, we got one that's got eight counties. So, uh, Senator Cook, he's got eight counties. So, the rural area is getting diluted as far as representation goes because of the way the population growth is moving. 
So it makes these challenges harder and harder for us to get the message across and to get the support that we need to, to move the needle. But uh, it's worth the fight, and uh, we've got to continue to educate, I think, some of our legislators that are fortunate to live in some of those rural or those urban areas that have revenue sources that can, can do the things that they need to do that some of the rural counties just don't have. So uh, that's our challenges, and uh, I know I'm committed to it, and uh, I know Angela and I have talked about it quite a, quite a bit because, uh, you know, when you live there and you see it every day, you understand it. Uh, when, when you don't, you get kind of isolated, I guess, from what the issues really are in some of these poor counties. And, uh, and it's, I think, our job to try to find a way to fix them. Uh, and I'm sure dedicated to do it. But I appreciate you being here today to, to show your support for, for this. Uh, I think it's about time, to be honest, because it's not going away. I want you to